Hi, pediatric squad. Welcome back to the channel. So today we talk about apnea of prematurity. You can see this preterm baby. He said, "I forgot to breathe. Please remind me." This is apnea of prematurity. So what exactly is the definition of that? So we can know from the name of that. So, firstly, apnea means not breathing, right? Prematurity means the preterm baby. Which is defined as the baby born before gestational age of thirty-seven weeks. So apnea of prematurity is one of the cause. It's one of the cause of the preterm baby not breathing. So let me remind you that if the preterm baby have the apnea, it does not mean he must have the apnea of prematurity. Apnea of prematurity is a diagnosis of exclusion. So we need to know about this. Very important. I repeat. If the preterm baby has the apnea, it does not mean that they have apnea prematurity. It is, it has other causes. It is a diagnosis of exclusion. So, what is the definition of apnea? We need to know. Um, so, if the baby not breathing for more than twenty seconds, or they have a shorter pause, but it is associated with desaturation or bradycardia, we can define that the baby has apnea. So how common is apnea of prematurity? It is very, very common. So the baby born with gestational age less than twenty-eight weeks, basically one hundred percent of the baby has the apnea of prematurity. They will somehow not breathing at some point. Okay. So for the baby with gestational age of thirty-three to thirty-four plus six weeks, around fifty percent of them has the apnea of prematurity. So it is very common disease. You must need to know that about that in neonatology. So why the premature baby has the apnea? So first thing we need to know is that apnea can have two causes. The first cause is central apnea. The second one is obstructive apnea. So the central apnea means um, the baby does not have the inspiratory drive, which is due to the like the brain, um, the neurotransmitter problem. The baby does not have the drive, ins、uh, the drive for inspiration. For obstructive apnea, the baby has the inspiratory drive, but then there is some obstruction、uh, throughout the airway, and therefore they has the apnea. So how about apnea of prematurity? Is it central or obstructive? They are both, both central and obstructive. So apnea of prematurity is not a disease; it is rather a physiological immaturity. Why? Because the baby was born premature.、Um, many things are, are are immature for them. So apnea of prematurity is one of them. It is physiological immaturity instead of a pathological process. So when we talk about、um, Apnea of prematurity is both central and obstructive. So let's talk about why central apnea first. So, in inside our body, we have two main factors which stimulate us to breathe. Firstly, is the CO two. Secondly, is the oxygen. When the CO two is high, our brain will tell us to breathe more to wash out the CO two. When the oxygen is low, the brain will ask us to breathe more to gain more oxygen. So for premature baby, when we have high CO two, um. They have blunted response to them, and therefore, even the CO two is high, they still、um, not very well to increase the breathing, and that's why they have the apnea. And the second thing is,、um, they have also low response to low oxygen level. Why? Because in fetus,、um, they rely the placenta for the oxygen, and actually, the oxygen level in there for them is quite low. And therefore, there are some inhibitory、um, neurotransmitter for the brain to、um, not to stimulate、um, the respiratory drive even when the oxygen level is low. And therefore, for premature baby when it comes out, this kind of inhibitory response is still there, and they still have the decreased ventilatory response to low O two, like they were in the fetus. And other component is.、Um, They also have the obstructive apnea. So in preterm baby,、um, they have poor pharyngeal muscle tone. And therefore, when they sleep, they lie down.、Um, the poor muscle tone may lead to obstruction. So the second thing is,、uh, in premature baby, they tend to have the inhibitory upper airway reflex to be activated, which means、um, when some irritants is there, it's more、um, easier for them to have the obstructive airway. 
because of this reflex. Presentation is easy. When you don't breathe, um, you don't have enough oxygen, you will have a desaturation. And for baby without enough oxygen, without good ventilation, they will have bradycardia. And therefore, um, they will present with desaturation and bradycardia. So the diagnosis. As I've mentioned, this is very, very important. Apnea of prematurity is the diagnosis by exclusion. I repeat, it is diagnosis by exclusion. So what are the differential diagnoses? Because um, for a preterm baby with the apnea, we need to rule out other causes instead of we just, oh, the, it must be an apnea of prematurity. No, we need to rule out other causes. So the first cause uh, we need to think about is more benign cause, which is called periodic breathing. Because um, most baby, especially in preterm baby, they will have a cycle of uh, stop breathing and then breathe again, stop breathing and then breathe again. So usually um, uh, we call it periodic breathing. But then in periodic breathing, uh, the baby usually stop breathing for up to 10 seconds only. Unlike apnea of prematurity, up to 20 seconds or above. So in, also in periodic breathing, um, after the baby stop breathing, they tend to have increase in respiratory wave for a while, and then this, um, they may stop again. So this is periodic breathing. This is completely benign. Other causes uh, of apnea in premature baby include, um, the first thing is infection, especially the sepsis. Uh, we need to think about infection all the time when we have um, apnea in, in premature baby. Also, um, if the antenatally, um, the mother received magnesium sulfate or OPAs, um, they may have apnea. Neurologically, um, if there's some intracranial hemorrhage, intraventricular hemorrhage, or neonatal encephalopathy, seizure, etc., they may have apnea as well. And as I've mentioned, uh, we have obstructive apnea, right? So if there's any congenital abnormalities of the upper airway, like uh, chronoatresia, they may have the apnea. And in in premature baby, we need to think about NEC. Uh, metabolic causes like hypoglycemia, hypothermia, anemia can also lead to apnea. And therefore, we must need to roll all of this before we say this apnea is due to apnea of prematurity. So for investigation, so we need to roll out the cause, right? So therefore, we need to take the complete account to look for any anemia, look for any rise in white blood cell. We need to look for the CRP, blood culture for any sepsis. We need to take a look of the blood gas um, to know how severe the apnea is. And also, metabolic acidosis may signify like NEC or sepsis. For to check the glucose to look for any hypoglycemia, which can also lead to apnea. We need to do a chest X-ray and AX, uh, plus or minus X-ray. Um, chest X-ray, we need to see, look for any like infection foci or other causes, lung pathology leading to apnea. X-ray, look for any, any features of NEC. We also need to uh, consider to do the ultrasound brain to look for any intraventricular hemorrhage, intracranial hemorrhage. So management. Basically, we have three main directions for the management. The first thing is um, the general measures. Second thing is respiratory support. The third thing is caffeine. We give some coffee to the baby. Of course not, <laughs> but we can give the caffeine. So the general support is, firstly, we need to maintain a stable temperature for the baby, not hyperthermia or hypothermia. We can achieve that in the incubator. We need to position the baby to avoid extreme flexion and extension of the neck. So we need to check it because Extreme flexion or extension of the neck, again, will lead to obstruction of the airway, lead to obstructive apnea. So we need to avoid this. We need to maintain the nasal patency, again, is, um, to um, avoid the obstructive apnea. So we need to avoid vigorous suctioning um, to maintain the nasal patency. Sometimes when we vigorous suction, it may damage or injure the nose. So the second thing is respiratory support. Of course, we can give the oxygen supplement. Um, and in premature baby, most of the time, we need to give the ventilatory support, like um, the non-invasive ones, CPAP and IPPV. Or some baby, like very premature baby, we may need the mechanical ventilation. Even if the baby does not have other causes or other indication for the ventilatory support, if the baby only have the apnea of prematurity, we can still give the baby of CPAP. Why? Because the pressure can spleen the pharyngeal airway with um, spleen the pharyngeal airway, and then it can reduce the risk of upper airway collapse and obstruction. It can help the apnea of prematurity. 
The third thing will be the medication. It will be the caffeine. Um, so what are the indications? So basically, um, if the baby born um, less than 28 weeks, we can give the prophylactic caffeine for them, especially before extubation, to avoid um, the acne of prematurity. And of course, if the baby is uh, higher than 28 weeks, but then they have frequent and prolonged uh, apnea, we can give the caffeine to avoid that. So when should we take it off? Um, do the baby need to drink coffee for their whole life? No. Um, we can stop the caffeine at around uh, post-gestational age, post-menstrual age, 32 to 34 weeks. So, uh, But after stopping it, we need to keep the baby in the hospital for at least one week to 10 days. Why? Because the caffeine's half-life is around 3.5 days, and the effect will go completely goes off in around one week to 10 days time. So we need to observe for the baby in the hospital to see whether they have the apnea or not. Because if they have the apnea at home, sometimes it can be dangerous. So what are the prognosis? So the prognosis are quite good. As I said, it is not a disease. It is a physiological condition. So for baby born with uh, more than 28 weeks, usually it will resolve before uh, they achieve 37 weeks. For baby born with less than 28 weeks, usually it resolves when the baby is around 37 weeks. So the prognosis is quite good. So that's all for my presentation. Let's go to the summary. First of all, the most important thing is um, apnea prematurity is a diagnosis by exclusion. It occurs in all baby born less than 28 weeks. It is a physiological process instead of a disease. We can treat them with some general measures, respiratory support and caffeine. Most resolve at around 37 weeks. So that's the end of this talk. So if you like this kind of video, you may always subscribe to my channel. I hope to build up a community of the um, pediatrician who is in training and also the medical student or medical staff who are interested in pediatrics. I really hope that this channel can help you a bit and I really hope that um, I can build up a community with the knowledge sharing. So if you like this, you may like this video. In let me know in the comment section what do you want to know and then subscribe to the channel. So I'll see you next time. Bye.